Talk about the Redshift lineage. Uh, I'm not sure how much you know about Redshift. I, I try to uh, guide you through uh, the pain points of building out the Redshift lineage. So when uh, we are talking about Redshift lineage, there are, uh, uh, we are talking about table lineage. And uh, unfortunately, uh, like one, one of the lineage, what we want to get is the table lineage. Unfortunately, the Redshift, we are not that lucky than with Snowflake, where we have everything in one place. So here, basically, you can, the only thing what you can do is basically doing some nice tricks with uh, uh, Redshift uh, system tables to get this information. And one way, one approach, uh, what's, uh, where I went with, and actually it's implemented now, and uh, we, we are supporting multiple lineage collector based on the need and you will see so there are pros and cons for all of these one is basically the sds scan based one which basically there is a table so there is two tables what we're using for that there is a stl insert which contains all of the inserts uh, if any insert happens uh, any of the tables there will be uh, one record for that so basically we can use to see that which table somebody uh, inserted or loaded any uh, kind of data and there is this another table, uh, this is the STS scan, which basically if, uh, shows if in a table, there was a table scan happen, which of course, if you are running the select query and insert into a table, then which table you insert, that will be in the STL insert table and where you scan, uh, when the, where, where the tables what you query is, those should show up in the STL uh, scan table. Uh, and actually, this is the approach what uh, Zynga is using, and as well as, as I think Typeform, and they are already using with Data Hub, uh, getting the lineage. So it has, it works pretty well, it's fast, it's reliable because it's using Redshift uh, system tables. But the problem with, with, with that one, uh, but there are a few problems with that. So STS can only works uh, with Redshift tables. And if you have like Redshift spec spectrum tables, which are external tables, those won't show up. So we, I try to come up with some kind of solution to being able to capture those uh, lineage as well. Uh, and I think another, another uh, drawback what you should know if you are uh, doing a, a querying of you uh, or there is a, a query which touches a view, then view of course won't show up in the STL scan, but uh, but all the dependent tables, but uh, what's under the view will show up as a dependency. So uh, there is another approach actually, which is which you can set up in the Redshift lineage. It's the SQL, par uh, SQL parsing. Uh, we're using a library called uh, uh, SQL lineage and it's a Python library. Actually it works pretty well, of, uh, uh, but of course, so these, you, uh, if you would think that, and actually uh, this approach works uh, with external tables as well, like Reshi Spectrum, and you would uh, imagine that, okay, that's why we are not going into that way and using that, uh, that one. Uh, there are a few problems with that one as well. So one, it's slow because it's doing actual SQL parsing. And of course, it's not that precise than using internal table. So one, Known issue what I saw if if uh, uh, any of the table uh, table name is a reserve word like you have a table called date then it uh, basically won't show that table but only the alias if you have an alias on top of that so basically it just skips it because it the, uh, the parser thinks it's a I guess it's a uh, in uh, it's a reserve word so these are the two approach which what you can set up. Actually, by default, we are defaulting to the uh, STS scan base, but you can set up the SQL uh, parsing base. And there is a third one, which is a mixed one, uh, which actually first run the, the SQL uh, parse, uh, parse base, which actually can capture uh, all of the tables. And if there is any issue with the table name, like the parser uh, failed to get it, then we also run the STL scan base to fix those issues. So that as well uh, can be set up. So these are just for the table lineage. And there are another things, it's a views. Actually, there is another uh, system table where you can get all the views and all the dependent objects. That's easy. So it works pretty well. Uh, but there is only one thing. It's uh, the late binding views. 
what you can create. Uh, so basically, you can create a view where the uh, the schema will be only checked when you run actual query. So basically, then those column or those tables won't show up in uh, the system table. The only thing what we can do is detect late binding views and basically running SQL parsing to getting uh, the tables from the view creation query. And uh, there is the last one, what we uh, wanted to support is basically uh, when you are loading a data into Redshift, it's called as a copy comment. We are, there is another system table to get this information as well and, uh, and getting the files, what, what is loaded into a table. And uh, this is how now the configuration looks like. Actually, as you can see uh, here, there is, there is this table lineage mode where you can set up if you, if you want to use the SQL base, the mixed one, or like, uh, or, or the default one, which is the STS scan based. Uh, and I think the rest, uh, if you actually, if you are using the SQL based uh, parser, there is another issue with that. So if you're using the SQL based parsing, uh, and you fail to define uh, the schema, like even for the tables, then uh, we have to know somehow what is the default schema. What you can set in the configuration, you can see here, but normally th there is an option to set it up. But uh, of course, if you change the schema in your session, a default schema, something else and running a query, we won't be able to capture that with SQL parsing. And let's do the demo quickly. Can I, can I ask some questions? Um... Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. This is, this is very near and dear to my heart because I, I used to work extensively in Redshift and tried to figure out the lineage of thousands of tables and views. And I mean, this is like, I, well, first of all, I'm very excited about it. Um, second of all, I just, I, yeah, I'm also very excited about it. Anyway, um, for, the, for the STL table scan and also the query parsing, do we have an idea of how much history by default is available? Because yeah. I know that's flushed, right? Like, yeah, yeah, that's, so do we... that's right. So the retention is uh, by the Redshift documentation, uh, as far as I can remember, I think two to five days based okay. on uh, how many queries are running on, on uh, the Redshift cluster. So if it's a busy cluster, then it will be shorter, like two days, mm -hmm. but, but more than a day for sure. So like two, two, uh, two days. Okay, because I, I think that's something that's different. I, as far as I know, that's different from BigQuery and um, Snowflake, where I think all like not only are they doing a better job of just storing table lineage as a, a system table, but I think they're retaining a longer history, if not all. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's something that we should definitely call out in the docs if we haven't already, just to like kind of help people understand best practices and the limitations of it. Um, which hopefully they already know since they're working in it, but it's just something that I think we should explicitly call out is not something that Data Hub has control over, right? Like it's it's specific to your instance. Yeah, actually the rest of recommendation is, is basically just uh, taking backup of that on your own if you want longer retention yeah. for, the, uh, for the query history. And I guess for the other tables, you should do that. Maybe we can, support if this is how our customers are using if they are backing up to being able mm -hmm. to specify your own uh, backup table or, or something like that yeah yeah or dumping it to i know that um the last two companies I, I was at we were dumping it into an s3 bucket and just storing it indefinitely so maybe we need to think through how do we say you know how do you point it to either s3 or redshift yeah, my, my only problem is that, so for that, you have to also back up all the other tables as well. So not sure, just, yeah. so, and usually I, uh, people are uh, doing backup from the uh, query history, I guess. So for, mm. for uh, there, the query parser sh should work actually mm -hmm. for those use cases. But if you want, uh, I don't know, the SPS can based, uh, then of course you have to back up that, that one mm -hmm. separately. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. So I have uh, this nice, I'm not sure how much you can see that, but basically uh, for the de demo de data, I will create a schema. I will create a couple of tables. Uh, actually, this is the Redshift demo tables and copying, uh, so uploading from S3 data to these tables, then creating a, a table. This is the sales by city and running uh, this example query 
and also creating a view uh, on the top of that data. And let's see how it will go. So hopefully it will uh, run all of this. So uh, it seems like it's worked. Uh, but just to show you I'm not cheating, I'm showing you my data hub and it's currently empty as you can see. Oh, it's a zoom, why is it? Okay, so no cheating as you can see. Uh, let's check, this is my, uh, so uh, this is uh, my uh, ingestion job, which basically will do uh, uh, generate the, the lineage. I'm going now with the, uh, the default lineage generation, and if we use the the demo three because that's what the schema uh, where I loaded the data. Let's just run it the normal way. So in the background now it's try it runs like four or five queries, one for the views of course, then the SDS scan, and or uh, what what I basically uh, mentioned before. And yeah, and it's loaded up on a bunch of lineage there. So then if I let's go here and check out. Let's check out the sales by city because I think it's a most interesting one. There should be some lineage, but let's check in the image graph. And as you can see, yes, this is so cool. And I think if I go to the event one, you can see as well uh, the view as well. This is awesome. Extracting out those S3 buckets is, is so great. Like what a nice, what a nice way to um like it's like a nice cherry on top of of just basic redshift lineage. Sure. So basically that's the lineage. Uh yeah, one one thing what uh, what I put there as well, what we did uh, discuss with Shishanka actually. So if the par query parser rule is an exception that we add the property into that table that hey these are the queries which failed this is by default the, uh, disabled i think we can i don't know if it, the default should be enabled if, uh, or disabled uh, but if you enable that then uh, for the query properties you can find those queries which actually failed during the query parsing if we are using the query parsing now i fail to show the query parser actually you should uh, believe me that's working as well <laughs> i i tried out all of these three so the mixed, uh, this STS scan based and the SQL based, I would assume that most of our customers would use the STS scan based, uh, but if they are using, uh, uh, and I think that should be the most reliable as well, but if it turns out they are having like, I don't know, uh, external tables, we, we still can say, okay, if you want to support uh, external tables, then you should use the, the SQL parser. One. 